Hello everyone and good evening. Welcome to the One Class channel. My name is Fajuri Rome and I'm an Honors Bachelor of Science graduate currently working towards medical school. Uh, today we'll be going over some commonly asked chemistry questions at both the high school and college levels. Um, if you need some extra homework help or some tutoring, please check out the links in the description below. With that being said, let's kick it off with today's session. And the first question is, how to find valence electrons of transition metals. So this is a very good question here. In fact, I do recommend that we take a quick glance at the answer here where they stress the electron configuration in the form. Well, you can't see what that sign is, but transition metals typically, in order to find how many valence electrons it has, it's important to list out its electron configuration. What does that mean? Uh, let's look at our periodic table here to be able to know what that is. So let's say we had a, um, let's say titanium, for example, um, as we want to find out the valence electrons of it. So electron configuration, uh, we have in terms of the off-ball principle, 1s, 2s, 3s, 4s, 5s, 6s, 7s, 2p, 3p, 4p, 5p, 6p, 7p, and then 3d, 4d, 5d, 6d, and then we have 4f and 5f, okay? So with that being said, we have, this is here in terms of this off ball principle, in the S shell, only two electrons can go there, which is just one orbital. So this accounts for two elements on the periodic table. And that's how I like to count them. Here in the P shell, there's three orbitals, six electrons in total, so that's six uh, elements on the periodic table. In the D orbital, it's going to be five orbitals, which is 10 electrons, which is 10 elements and then the F which is the lanthanum and the actinium series that will be 14 and what I mean by this 2 6 10 and 14 is that if you count for example the hydrogen and helium that would be your only 1s row and you would write that as 1s2 okay and then for the next row you'd see that lithium beryllium that would be your 2s2 and then from boron to neon as you'll see, it'll be 2p6. So now we're trying to get all the way to titanium. So then we finish up the third row. That's 2, 3p6. And then you notice when we get to the fourth row, potassium calcium, it would still be 4s2. But the difference here is that once you get to the scandium titanium, as you can see in this off ball principle, we've gone through here, we've gone there, we've done this. And then we finish this row as well. The next is actually 3D, because once you get into the D orbital, you're actually technically one orbital prior. But they're so close to each other in terms of the energy levels, that's why you have the 3D orbital so close to the 4S orbital. But in, for titanium, it'll be 4S2, 3D2. Now, with all this being said, technically speaking, because this is the third shell, the amount of valence electrons for this transition metal, titanium, would be here, 4s2, which is two valence electrons based on the superscript. Reason being is because four there signifies its most outer shell, the fourth shell, specifically for titanium, okay? So with that being said, that is typically what you do to find the um, valence electrons of transition metals. As you see, because most of them have to pass the S rows first, most transition metals will have um, two. But just in case in regards to that, the trick here is to make sure that you're counting in regards to the right amount of the electron configuration. Because that way then you can make sure that when you are counting them, you make adjustments based on what the specific transition metal may need. That way you can go about making sure it's the correct one. 
With that being said, for example, if we pick something like Chromium, you would notice that because here it would have 3D4, so, it's, so for Chromium here, it would have 3D4 instead of 3D2, because it's gonna be the fourth one, and 4S2. What happens here is because it's so close to being a half completely filled orbitals of the D orbitals, one of the uh, electrons from the 4S goes into 3D to where chromium is actually 3D5, 4S1, meaning that chromium would actually technically have one valence electron. As you can see here, if I typed in um, orbital configuration chromium, you would have, hope I have the right, 3D9, where is it? Hope we're looking the right way. This is, yeah, this is chromium. It would be 3D4 that it starts with. Let's see here. What is it? Um, interesting. Because it wouldn't be 3D9 either. I'm pretty sure that would be 3P4, 4S2. Even the 3P4. That's very weird. Electrical configurations are always very tricky to manage just because. It seems like everyone has a slightly different way of approaching it, but specifically for chromium, because if you wrote it in the orbital notation here, you would see that in regards to d orbital, what chromium would do instead of having the four, it would use that one electron from the 4s shell to fill it here. That way it could be balanced here in regards to having at least it half full for the 3d shell. So this is typically what chromium would have, meaning that chromium would most likely have one valence electron and you typically see it like um, I could probably say that one of the um, ions for chromium would be chromium one which would be written like this or specifically chromium one and then if I said chromium oxide for example because it only gave up one electron because that's the most outer one, you would have Cr2O. So if I typed in hopefully chromium oxide, oxide, ah, Cr2O3. Oh, that's because that's chromium 3 oxide. Or if we typed in chromium 1, Oxide. Hmm. Does chromium even have, or is it because the d orbital? And this is why transition metals are always tricky. <laughs> so, in summary, I would say the best way to find transition metals in terms of valence electrons, do check out this electron configuration. For some, it works; for others, it doesn't just because transition metals are quite complicated, especially when it comes to D orbital. So I would advise in regards to this, definitely do the electron configuration, double check to see if any changes need to be made. And that way, hopefully you'll be able to get a better glimpse of what the chromium can do. Well, transition metals in general. Thank you.